Hey everyone, Phil Pendlebury here and I hope you're having a super mega large day. Today I'm going to have a quick chat about a little feature that's hidden away inside your door. Uh, I've got Cubase 11 up and we're going to talk about panning sends. Let's do it. Okay, so panning sends, what do I mean and why do we need to do it? Something that you probably don't do very often and something that you probably don't need very often, to be honest, but can be very, very useful. So I've got a little track that I'm working on here and I'm going to use that as a little bit of a demo as to how you can do this. It's basically about having a stereo reverb and then having the ability to send to that reverb like you normally would but to be able to pan the source of the send. So we're not talking about panning the actual instrument, we're talking about panning the send to the reverb, which will give you a slightly different impression of where that instrument is coming from in the send itself. And it can be done with a lot of uh, different effects, it can be done with reverbs, delays, pretty much anything, but not every plugin supports the stereo panning system. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that right now, let's go. So what I'll do is I'm going to play you a little bit of this track that I've been working on. Actually doesn't use a great deal of what I'm going to show you, but at least you've got familiarity with the track itself, and then we can have a little experiment. The track's called Our Children's Children, lyrics written by Carl Fielder, a good friend of mine, and the music and everything else, and the guide vocal at the moment is uh, all done by me. Let's have a listen. Okay, that'll do for now. Um, you can hear the influences uh, for that track, I'm sure. But whether you like this kind of music or not, that's not really the point here. It's just that I can use it as a really good example uh, of what I'm going to show you. So what I'm going to do is I will bring up the um, guitar. Uh, let's leave the solo one off for now. Okay, so you can hear um, there's a bit of guitar work going on there, mainly chords, and they're all kind of supporting each other. Let's get rid of the cameras now that we're zoomed in, and you should be able to see everything nice and clearly. What I've got here is a close-up of uh, the main mixer just showing the audio channels. The groups are down below, but we don't need to worry about those right now. And here on the left are all the effects. Let's just uh, have a listen to one of the guitars on its own. There we go. So there's two of those. So as you can see, it's a standard thing. We've got two separate parts played slightly differently and played with slightly different settings. So what I'm going to do here, just to make this a little bit clearer, is we'll get rid of the delays as well from the actual um, guitar 
sound. So there's a few schools of thought on this and you know people will say right if you add a, want to add a reverb to those guitars uh, to make them sound like they're in the same room you'll just do a standard reverb add. So we'll do that right now. I've got a Pro R here uh, which is just on a very basic setting. It's not really particularly appropriate um, maybe for this type of track but let's play it anyway and add a little bit of that in and see what happens. So you get the idea that makes those guitars sound like they're in the same room that's basically a normal send to a normal reverb so here's the trick so I'm going to use the same effect and let's listen I should point out that there's no treatment yet on these guitars so there's no gating or whatever to get rid of all the prep movement this is just a demo track which is still a work in progress um, but I don't need to really explain that to you guys, do I? Because you know all that. Right, so here we go. We've got the send here. This is Cubase. Of course, it might be slightly different in your particular DAW host. So here's the little hidden trick. It's the panning control for the send. So there it is. What happens if we move the panner around? So what we've got there is we've got the guitar on the right hand side, or it should be if your speakers or headphones are the right way around. And, and if mine are, and the reverb itself is not panned to the left, but the send to the reverb is panned to the left. So if, if you imagine a room, it's going to make an overall sound. So if you're stood in a squash court, if you're stood in the middle of that squash court and you clap your hands, you're going to get a, a, a sound coming from all the way around you. If you move to the left of that squash court and clap your hands, you're still going to get the sound coming from all around you, but it'll be biased towards where you are standing. And that's the effect we're giving here. Perhaps we should turn it up a little bit just to be make it really obvious. Okay, so why would you want to use this? Well, there's a number of reasons really. And as I said, there's a big school of thought that says you shouldn't really do this because what you want to do is make it sound like that guitar's over there and that guitar's over there and that singer is there, but they're all in the same room. However, it does give you a little bit of a dimension to some instruments, an extra dimension. And not only that, if you want like I often do, if you want that guitar reverb to be just along with the guitar itself over, let's say we've got the right hand guitar, want the reverb on the right, we can still use the same reverb. We don't have to put in a separate one or pan that particular reverb over to that side. And it can be used in all sorts of quite extreme ways. So let's have a little mess around and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Thank you. 
you get the idea. So basically what we're doing there is we're just creating a little bit more dimension and a little bit more kind of movement around the room, I suppose. So the other thing to look at is this doesn't work with all reverbs. For example, I have here my favorite kind of overall tool that I use for just about everything is the UAD EMT 140. So if I have to try and do the same thing with that, and if you watch the um, meter here, you'll see. Let's just go back to the right hand guitar. You can see that it makes no difference at all to the position of the send on this particular reverb because it's not a stereo compatible reverb. Some are and some aren't and the easiest way to tell is just to do what I'm doing here and just have a look at the meters you can see. See the meter there is heavier on the left because I've hand the send over to the left. So next thing we can do is have a quick listen to that without the actual guitar channel itself. So we can do the send into pre-fader. So this way we can turn the volume of the guitar down and you'll just hear the reverb. Then we can move the send around and you will get a really good idea of what's going on. So here we go. So the other thing we can do is we can get Cubase to follow the panning of the actual instrument with the send and I'll show you how we do that now. Little button here and it says link panners. So if we do that, let's put all these back to where they were. So there's my send which is still set up as it was. So we've got the volume down. As you can see, the guitar itself is panned hard right. So let's play. Don't forget what you're hearing now is just the reverb without the, the signal itself. And now the send to that reverb is following the actual panner of the instrument. So let's put it back in place. All right, so now let's have a little mess about with some delay. What I've done here is I have an instance of Timeless 3 with a kind of short delay, and let's hear that. What you're thinking is, well, yeah, I could just do that with a, a normal delay. I could have the guitar on one side and have the guitar delayed on the other side. But as I said earlier, the same thing applies to the reverb. You could have the other guitar on the left side and the delay panned to the right, but still using the same delay. So you're not having to use different instances of that delay to pan things around. So I'll show you what I mean.
So as you can see, you can create all kinds of interesting kind of effects with that that are a little bit different from the standard, yeah, we're just going to send to a reverb and put everything in the same room. It's not to be used a lot, I admit that, but there are some interesting uses, especially if you just want a, a live band. One guitar, bass, drums, put the guitar over to one side, pan the send slightly to the other side, and you've got that little bit of extra space. Although it's not sitting in the same room, you've got that little bit of movement around your ears. Another thing that I like to do is, for instance, drums would be to have the drum reverb a little bit more central instead of all the way to the end of each speaker, you know. Um, and what happens there is you just get a little bit more clarity because everything is not all just smothered in reverb. Once again, it depends on what you're after. But I had to do this video because I know there's a lot of people, and we talked about it a week or so ago, I know there's a lot of people that were just unaware that you could pan your sends. So there you go. I'm just going to have a little bit more of a fiddle about so you can see some more little bits and bats, and then we'll call it a day. All right, I think that'll do for now. I hope that enlightened you a little bit. And if it's something you already knew about, well, maybe it just refreshed your memory. Look forward to seeing you next time and thanks for joining me. Don't forget, of course, if you do feel like just clicking that little like button, that would be super helpful. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Lots more interesting stuff coming soon. Thanks a lot, super mega large.